Welcome back everybody. Now today I'm testing out the top four waffle makers on Amazon to see how they work, see how they compare. So let's get started in today's video. Before I get started, let's flash back to when I actually ordered these, the unboxing, and then we'll start making some waffles. All right, let's open up the Amazon top four best sellers for waffle makers and see what we got. All right, number one is the Dash Mini Waffle Maker. Let's see. All right, so this one's got 213,000 ratings, number one bestseller, only $12.49. Looks like a good deal to me. I can get it today if I order now, so let's do it. All right, next is the Oster Belgian Waffle Maker. Let's see what we got here. This was 20 bucks, Amazon's choice, 37,000 ratings. Looks pretty good to me. Let's add to the cart. All right, next up, the Car Mini Waffle Maker. Let's look at this one. All right, it says it makes seven fun different race cars. 40 bucks seems kind of steep for that. Amazon's choice, not as many ratings as the other ones, only 2,600, so this should be interesting. If I order the next 16 minutes, I can get it today, so I better hurry. And finally, the Bella Classic Rotating Nonstick Belgian Waffle Maker. This one's also 40 bucks, not an Amazon's choice, not a bestseller, it's got 15,000 ratings. I can also get this one today, so I'll add that one to the cart and then check out. All right, the cart looks like $121.84 for four waffle makers. This should be fun, I'm checking out now. All right, that is ordered, so either later tonight or first thing tomorrow morning, I'm gonna unbox these and get started. Let's take a look at the Dash Mini Waffle Maker. I paid $12.49 for this, it comes in 20 colors. I'll definitely look this over, all right. All right, it is very small, but it's supposed to be mini, so I guess that makes sense. This model has a non-stick surface, indicator light, non-slip feet, easy lift handle, and a four inch surface. 350 watts, PFOA free, 1.3 pounds, it's very light, 4.7 star rating with over 213,000 ratings on Amazon. Ranked number one in waffle irons on Amazon. Let's take a look at the Oster Belgian waffle maker. I paid $19.99 for this. Much more minimal instructions in the dash. All right, this makes fresh eight inch homemade Belgian waffles, non-stick surface, easy to clean, adjustable temperature control, safe to touch handle. 1,080 watts, 3.19 pounds, 4.5 star rating among 37,000 plus ratings, ranked number two in waffle irons on Amazon. This is the Waffle Wow Cars and Trucks Waffle Maker. I paid $39.95 for this. Kind of minimal instructions, that's okay. All right, the Waffle Wow makes seven unique shapes. They also have other themes like sea creatures, animals, unicorns, and dinosaurs. This also has a non-stick surface. 4.7 star rating and about 2,600 reviews. Ranked number three in waffle irons on Amazon. It's time for the Bella Rotating Waffle Maker. I paid $39.99 for this. I got some instructions. All right, the Bella comes in two colors. It makes one inch thick Belgian waffles, up to four waffles in 10 minutes. It has a rotating function for evenly cooked waffles. Non-stick surface, 1000 watts, PFOA free. Weighs five pounds. 4.5 star rating among over 15,000 reviews. Variable browning control, even consistent browning, indicator light. Compact storage, easy cleanup. This one's ranked number four in waffle irons on Amazon. Also seems to have the most mixed reviews of all the bunch here. All right, so let's read the manuals and then get started. All right, so here they are in order. We've got the Dash, the Oster, the Waffle Wow, which makes cars and trucks, and also the Bella. I'm gonna do this basically in two rounds. The first round I'm gonna do right out of the box following the instructions as well as I can. It probably won't be perfect. I'll probably make mistakes. There might be some issues in overfilling. We're just gonna let it ride. At that point, I'll turn the camera off. I'm gonna make some adjustments, kind of practice. I'll turn it back on for round two and see how it goes after I've used them for a while. That's the idea at least. All right, before I get started, I did wipe all these down with a wet soapy sponge and rinse them off with a wet sponge. So I think they're all clean now at least. All these waffle makers seem to have a different idea about what you should do as far as oiling them goes. The Dash, for example, says, to spray both cooking surfaces with a small amount of cooking spray. The Oster says to season it before using them with cooking oil before the first use and to re-season it as needed. The Cars and Trucks specifically says spray a light cooking spray and the Bella says do not use cooking spray but use vegetable oil, olive oil, or canola oil. So they're all a little bit different as far as oil goes. I'm going to try to stick with the instructions for each one of these as best I can, at least for round one. For round two I might make some adjustments but for round one we're sticking with the instructions. We're going by the book for round one. Let's see what we got here. Place it on a stable, dry surface. Check. 
Plug the cord into a power outlet. The indicator light will illuminate, signaling that the mini waffle maker is heating up. All right, the light's kind of dim, but it is lit up. When that goes off, we're ready to cook. Step three, carefully lift the cover. Spray with cooking spray. Now the instructions never said how much batter to use, but when you go to the recipes, it says use a quarter of a cup. That's what I'm going with, one quarter of a cup. All right, and close. Now the next step just says when it's cooked to your preference. They don't really say how long it's gonna take. So I guess we'll just figure that out. All right, it's been a couple minutes. Let's take a peek. There's not a lot of batter in there, so it can't take that long to cook, right? Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, oh, that's good. Let's see, it's not done, but it's getting there. I'm gonna say I could go a little bit more batter because it didn't go all the way to the edges. It was a quarter of a cup, but it wasn't quite enough. All right, it's been a few minutes. Let's, let's open this up and see what we got here. Uh, looking pretty nice, looking pretty nice here. All right, so here's what we got, looking, looking pretty good. Look, come out of there easily. Yeah, not too bad. This was a quarter of a cup. I got a little bit missing on the edge here, so, you know, some adjustment next time. While I have this open and it's still plugged in, let's see how warm it really is. It looks a little bit warmer on one side than the other. How about this plate? It looks a little bit warmer on one side than the other. 310 up there, 330 down here. Not too bad, pretty even. All right, so that's my first attempt. Let me see. Not bad. Really, I think the only adjustment I gotta make for round two in this one is to add a tiny bit more batter. Otherwise, it came out pretty good. Next up, let's try the oyster. See how that goes. All right, so it's seasoned with oil, so that shouldn't be a problem. Let's plug it in and get started. Step one, close the unit, plug it in. All right, the light is on. Now it's time to pour. Now they say to pour three quarters of a cup of batter. Starting from the outside, it's going in a circular motion. Should be easy enough, right? So that three quarters of a cup didn't look like it was gonna fill it up all the way. Maybe it will, we shall see. People on Amazon were saying three quarters of a cup was too much. I've started my stopwatch. They say it's gonna be about five minutes on low, four and a half on medium, five on high. I've got it on medium, so we got four and a half minutes to go. We are at four and a half minutes. Let's open it up. And, oh, not enough batter, not enough batter. I mean, it looks okay, but it's not enough batter. Three quarters of a cup was not enough. I mean, it's close, it's close. We want this to be filled out though. We can't have, what's, we can't have that missing. It's kind of like, hey Junior, do you want 90% of a waffle? You won't want that, you gotta have the full thing. Let's take a look at these plates while it's still plugged in and see how hot it really is. It kind of seems like there's a bit of a circular pattern where most of the heat's at. 277, much cooler. As far as the top plate goes, that doesn't look totally even either. The top plate looks more even than the bottom plate does though. Not a bad first try, but I'm gonna have to mess with this a little bit until I get it just right, which I'll do that for round two. All right, it's time down to make some cars and trucks. This is the Waffle Wow. It makes seven different shapes. Step number one, plug it in. Right, here's the indicator light. When it turns green, I'm gonna start pouring. They don't really say how much to put in there. I think you're just supposed to put it flush with the top. I'm not totally sure. Um, we shall see. I think we're ready. Now, the first thing you're supposed to do is spray it with a little cooking spray according to the instructions. Now it just says to fill them up. Let's see. Well, the stopwatch is going. I have a very bad feeling about this one. I feel like I was overfilling it. The first ones are in there for like a minute or two longer than what the last ones are. I definitely need to practice this one a little bit. I wear three minutes. Let's see what it looks like. And, oh, I overfilled it. They look done. Let's see what they look on the other side. I mean, yeah, it's kind of cute, pretty small. Let me see what we got. See, now this one is perfectly filled right here. Perfect. Very nice, I must say. It looks wonderful. This one looks good too. Okay, this one doesn't look quite right. Let me see, well, maybe not bad. The center one is, is the biggest one. Oh, look, oh no, this. All right, before I take a look at these, let me uh, look at the surface here, the thermal imager. All right, let's see what we got here. It looks pretty even actually, surprisingly even, probably the most even of the entire bunch. For something that has so many crevices and indentations, it looks surprisingly even. It's gonna pull the excess off, which really isn't that, that big of a deal. It's kind of easy to do. I just took the front bumper off. I guess that's a bus. I completely mangled that one. The truck looks good. Actually, it'd be good for having syrup right in there. What is that? I can't tell. I guess this is kind of like a, a, a bug. This one came out perfect. Look at this. Beautiful. Very nice. This one came out nice too. And the truck it looks like it's missing a, looks like it got an accident or something. It's missing a part of the back of it. Some of these look pretty good. Some look like they just got out of the junkyard, but 
Not bad for a first attempt. Filling that one is pretty touchy because not only do you have to make sure you fill all of them about right, but by the time you put the last ones in there, the first ones are already cooking. Definitely something I've got to work with, but let's see what's next. Let's see how the bellow works. First up, plug it in. Indicator lights are on. Set the temperature control, I'm going right in the center. Now we wait three to five minutes for it to preheat. All right, the light is on, let's do it. They said apply a little bit of oil beforehand, which I'm gonna do right now. I have one cup of batter. It didn't say how much to use, but one of the recipes seemed to imply it was one cup, so I'm going with one cup. We shall see about this. Turn it over, 180. And now we wait. It's only two minutes and already said it's ready? Let's, I don't know about that, let's see. Oh wow, let's see what we got. I tend to like my waffles a little bit more brown, so I'm kind of liking this one. Add a little bit more batter, but otherwise that one went pretty well, and it was fast. Let's take a look at the surface and see how that looks. Pretty even, I think. There's definitely consistency in the pattern between the bottom and the top plates. But there we go. I, this is the crispiest of all the ones I've made. All right, this is how they look after making their first round of waffles. None of them really had anything stuck in there, so I, I don't have really much to clean up. I'm just gonna use a sponge, clean them out, and head on to round two. Well, I think I have enough information to do some practice around these off camera. I'll come back for round two after I've done some practice and see how it goes. All right, here we are, day two, round number two. Now, I'm saying it's round number two, but actually some of these I've tested several times in between round one and round two to try to get them right. All right, so the point of round two is not to declare the perfect amount of time and the perfect amount of batter to use to make ideal waffles, because that's gonna vary based on the type and consistency of the batter that you use. The point, hopefully, is that I can make improvements over the first round with a few adjustments. I've tried off camera to make a few adjustments. Some of these seem like they require more work than others. I don't think that my results are gonna be perfect for round two, but they should be better. So let's try it out right now. All right, for the dash, the only thing I'm gonna do is add just a tiny bit more than one quarter of a cup, and I'm gonna leave it a little bit longer. Otherwise, I think it came out pretty good yesterday. Let's try it out. This should work better. This time I get my stopwatch going. All right, we're at two and a half minutes. That should be right, let's see. And, oh yeah, that's it. All right, that's much closer to this, very nice. It's crispier, ah, it's like 90, 90%, maybe not 100%, very close though. Not many adjustments on this one. I added a little bit more batter, cooked a little bit longer, it came out perfect. So the dash is very easy, I understand why it's so popular. The only problem with this one maybe is that it doesn't make a lot at one time, but for what it does do, it does it well. For the Oster, my notes for round two are to preheat it on high, move to medium when it's done preheating, try one cup of batter, and put it in there for four minutes. I have to say that the Oster has taken me, I think, about six rounds to get right. And, close, I can still do better. We're close, we're very, very close. And, wow, I mean, it's a lot closer, but it still wasn't enough. I could still go even more than that. I went one cup, they say three quarters. Even though this is technically round two, this is my sixth attempt on the Oster. So I'm gonna get it right this time. It's preheated to high. Open it up, put some oil on there. I've got a little over a cup of batter this time. Reduce the dial to medium, and now we wait. The stopwatch is going for the sixth time. Well, I knew eventually I'd go too far and I went too far. Well, this has been my luck on the Oster's. You look at this. Okay, so when I went to one cup, it was still not enough. And when I went just over a cup, now it's spilling out of the sides. I don't know. The Oster has been a tricky one for me. I, I'm not sure why. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's much different from the others, but it seems like for some reason, I'm either underfilling or overfilling it very easily. All right, here we go. Let's check my overflowing waffle. And, well, the waffle itself looks beautiful, but the overflow does not. All right, so here's round five and six. <laughs> round five was just a little bit underfilled, and round six was a little bit overfilled. 
This was exactly one cup. This was just over one cup. Well, I think that's about all I can really do on the Oster. I, I know that it's going to be somewhere between one cup and one and a quarter cups. That's it's about where I'm going to be at. I think the preheating on high and then jumping it down to medium, that helps the crispiness. The outside is nice and crispy on these. I just haven't got the amount yet, but I think I'm close. But that's as close as I'm going to get in this video. The notes I made for round two for cars and trucks were to go two and a half minutes. Fill each one very carefully because each one of them seems to have its own learning curve. I can usually get five or six of them right, but I haven't got all seven yet. But I think that if I can get five or six, I'm in good shape. All right, it's preheated. Let's see. Now for my technique on this one, I'm going to try a baster and see if that works any better filling this middle one here. Two and a half minutes. Let's check it out. Oh, it looks good. It looks good. I think I did a pretty good job of filling them, but uh, this one looks like it's a little bit underfilled. The rest of them, I think, came out pretty good. Let's pull them out of there, see how they look. So it looks like the, the bus is a little bit underfilled. It looks more like a hover bus. It has no wheels. Uh, this one didn't really make, make much of a shape at all, but the rest of them look good. The difference between overfilling and underfilling is not much on this one, so you really have to kind of play around with it. Uh, I feel like I've played around with it enough to get a good feel for it, although a lot of times when you're filling it, you realize you overfill it and you can't really do anything about it. But I, I think in the end, your kids aren't really gonna care if it's a little bit overfilled or underfilled. They're gonna think it's cute and then they're gonna eat it. For the bell on my notes are really just to increase the batter by a little bit over last time. Otherwise, it was perfect the first time around. So that's what I'm going to do for round two. All right, the indicator light just went on. Brush with a little bit of oil. Just over one cup in here. All right, so last time it was just a little bit underfilled. Now it looks like it's a little bit overfilled. That's just the way it goes. I guess that's why they have this, uh, this drip tray down here. This has been the steamiest of all of the waffle makers I've done so far. All right, here we go. Similar to yesterday, a little bit more overfilled. I like my waffles a little bit darker, so I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. I mean, I overfilled it a tiny bit. It, it's really difficult to get the perfect amount. Either I'm gonna be just under or just over. I don't really mind either one. And to me, this one is the brownest I like. So I think that, so I would say the Bella round one and two both did pretty well. All right, here's my final versions of all of these. We got the Bella. This one came out really nice. Crispy, dark, just the way I like it. Uh, the dash right here and the cars, I think they came out uh, nicely. The cars, I got five out of the seven perfectly. Two of them, not as good. The Oster, I got, a little overflow with just over a cup and I got a little under with just a cup. So it's going to be somewhere in between there. Consistency is pretty good. I have a nice crispy outside, nice fluffy inside. I think it came out nice. It's just the amount I'm still kind of struggling with. This might be too dark for some people. I mean, it may be perfect for others. Uh, this is kind of where I lean. I like my waffles a little bit dark and crispy, but I think all of them actually came out pretty well. So in the end, I think you can't go wrong with any of these. I can see why each one of these has their own fans. But if I had to rank them from number four up to number one, Here's my ranking, this completely personal choice. Your mileage may vary. Number four, I'm going with the cars and trucks. The only reason I'm picking that one is because number one, it doesn't make a lot of waffles. And number two, each one of those is a different learning curve and it takes a little bit of, of time and effort to get those right. I never quite got it right. I got close, but it wasn't perfect. It's also a bit of a novelty item as well. If you have kids, it'll probably rank higher for you than it did for me. Next up, I'm gonna go with the Oster. That one was pretty good, but I never quite got the right amount in there. It seems a bit touchy. Also, it's a bit cheap feeling. It feels cheap. It just feels cheap. Not only that, but I don't, I'm not a big fan of the stainless steel look. It just gets fingerprints all over it. Not bad, but not my favorite. For number two, I'm going with the number one seller on Amazon, which is the Dash. It's easy to use and it's consistent. The only problem with that one is it doesn't make a very big waffle. But overall, I can see why people like it. And that leaves me with number one, which is the Bella. I really like that one and these big, deep Belgian waffles. It was probably the fastest and the most consistent of the bunch, especially for me because I like dark, crispy waffles and it did a good job with that. Overall, though, if you work with any of these, you can probably get them to your liking. But if you've used any of these waffle makers, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.